This is Ham College, episode 41 for May 31st, 2018. Ham College is brought to you by ICOM. Spring is in the air, and it's time to check out ICOM's line of D Star radios. And by hamstudy.org, a great way to study for your next license exam. Good evening. Welcome to another episode of Ham College. I'm Professor Thomas. And I'm Dean Martin. And it's uh, great to be back. Got another fun show for you tonight. Boy, we started out with the bloopers right up front yeah, tonight, Yeah, I mean, didn't we? so uh, stay tuned for the end. Yeah, we don't know how it's going to end yet. But there'll be some bloopers on there for sure. Yeah. Maybe we'll have a little buzzer action tonight. It could be. That's a good chance. Uh, we'll just have to see on that. Uh, what did we talk about last time, Tommy? You know, that's a real good question. Let me see if I can remember. Well, I covered that up where you couldn't remember. Yeah, you know I know that. And you put it out of my eyesight, too. Uh, we had some uh, digital modes, and we talked about some HF antennas. And we did. And, uh, you know, I think we're going to talk about some more digital modes tonight. Yeah. And probably some more HF antennas as well. They're both good topics. They are. Both uh, very good topics there. We just got back from a a long trip. <laughs> a very long trip. Uh, about, mine was about a day longer than I had planned on. Yeah. We went to Dayton Hamvention. And, uh, boy, always a great time there. Get to see a lot of... Uh, nice people, old friends, new friends, shake hands, kiss a few babies, you know, yeah, the whole nine it's yards. It's a great so. time, like always. Well, it was a little bit uncooperative through part of it, but uh, not so bad that it ruined the ham fest. No, it didn't ruin the ham fest, that's for sure. First question here, and you can ask me this one. I don't okay. remember the answer, but you can ask me. Okay. Under what circumstances are messages that are sent via digital modes exempt from Part 97 third-party rules that apply to other modes of communication? A. Under no circumstances. B. When messages are encrypted. C. When messages are not encrypted. D. When under automatic control. So let's see. Under what circumstances are messages that are sent via digital modes exempt from Part 97 third-party rules that apply to other modes of communication. Do you know, I don't think there's anything really in ham radio that uh, third parties are exempt from Part 97. So I don't think it's when it's under automatic control uh, it's not when messages are not encrypted. It's not when messages are encrypted because you can't encrypt messages on amateur radio. Mm -hmm. So we know that's not right. I'm going to say it's under no circumstances. Tommy, what do you think? I agree with that. that. Everybody's got that one right over in the chat room. I think that was a pretty simple one. Um, and so I lucked out on that, I believe. Let's see. Under no circumstances. Oh, sorry. I was just trying to wipe my glasses <laughs> off so I could see. Okay. Well, then let me ask you this one. We'll All see right, how hit this me. goes. What will I try? But, you know, it's, <laughs> what is required to conduct communications with a digital station operating under automatic control outside the automatic control band segments? A, the station initiating the contact must be under local or remote control. B, the interrogating transmission must be made by another automatically controlled station. C, no third-party traffic may be transmitted. 
or D, the control operator of the interrogating station must hold an extra class license. Well, I'm going to read that question again to make sure I got it. Yeah, I'm um, glad I'm asking you. Yeah, me too. Not, no, not me. No, I'm, <laughs> um, any, anytime, anytime when you're taking that test, if you don't fully understand the question, read over it and read over it again because yeah. you, you've got time to do such as that. And do the same understand. thing with the answers too. It, it, yeah. Absolutely. But it's required to conduct communications with a digital station operating under automatic control outside the automatic control band segments. Station initiating the contact must be under local or remote control. Local, remote. The interrogating transmission must be made by another automatically controlled station. That, I don't believe that's, I don't believe B is true. C, the third party traffic, no third party traffic may be transmitted. I don't believe that's true either. Or D, the control operator of the integrity must station must hold an extra class license. You don't have to have an extra class to do digital. So I think the the only logical answer is A. That in my mind, the A, the station initiating the contact must be under local or remote control. Which yeah, that's what everybody's saying over in the chat room there. I th I think you're probably right on that one. Let's find out. And you are right on that one. Okay. Okay, well, next question. Which of the following connectors would be a good choice for a serial data port? Uh, we should get this one. A, PL259. B, type in. C, type SMA. Or D, DE9. I've never heard of a DE9 connector. I haven't either. I've heard of a DB9, which would have been what I thought the answer would be. Yep. I think it is. The answer is DB9, and they've got a typo here in the question pool. Uh, it looks like someone would have caught that one, but I'm sure they eventually will. I'm going to say it's a D, a DB9. Everyone over in the chat room is saying that. Let's find out. And it is D. DE9. DE9, or DB9 as we know it. This is a DB9 connector right here. I'm really too far away for you to see it, but uh, it's a pretty, uh, pretty common connector used with serial communications. This one's a 9-pin. Some of the old-school uh, serial ports used DB25 connectors. Right. Tom made a good point. I mean, also, I mean, it's got to be the DE9 one because the others are antenna. Yeah, connectors. they're all RF type mm. connectors. So, DB9. What two devices in an amateur radio station might be connected using a USB interface? A, a computer and a transceiver. B, microphone and transceiver. C, amplifier and antenna. Or D, power supply and amplifier. And this one's mine, right? Mm hmm Two devices might be connected using a USB interface. Well, power supply and amplifier are not going to be it. Uh, there's, there's no, uh, that kind of current is not going to work. Go over USB. Amplifier and antenna is not going to be right either. No. Nope. A microphone and a transceiver? Uh, no, your radio station and microphone does not hook up to the computer, typically. Uh, a, computer and transceiver. That's got to be the answer, A. I'm going to agree with you, Tommy, and uh, that's what everyone's saying over in the chat room. Computer and transceiver. Yeah, so you... You know, that is kind of a, that is the correct answer. Mm -hmm. But you know, they make microphones now that have a USB connector on them. They, they do, but typically, uh, you wouldn't normally, you would hook, your radio yeah. would have the microphone hooked to it under most circumstances. And if yeah. you've got, unless you've got one of those uh, odd uh, software controlled ones. Yeah. Uh, actually, I guess it still looks to the, to the radio. 
Yeah. Uh, but anyway, so you took the computer and the transceiver together, so you can so your computer can can control the radio for your. Yep. Okay. Well, then uh, hit me with this one. That was interesting. Which of these connector types is commonly used for audio signals in amateur radio stations? A, PL259. B, B and C. C, RCA Phono. Or D, Type-In. Well, that's a, that's a pretty easy one right there for me. Uh, we know PL259s are those... Uh, those like these right here in this bag, except they're usually not gold, that are used to connect your antenna with. We know a BNC connector is also an RF type of connector. Mm -hmm. A type N connector is also a RF type yeah. connector. We haven't talked about that one a lot, but uh, yeah, I don't. Just a little probably bit, haven't. not very much. Yeah. But. So when we're talking about audio whether it's ham radio or not, out of those choices there, it's always going to be that RCA phono. Mm -hmm. There's other types of audio connectors, but not in that list right there. So it's C, RCA phono, which... Uh, yeah. And it says commonly used, so yeah. that, that is very common. Mm -hmm. Using a lot of hi-fi gear as well. This is an RCA phono connector, real popular for... For different kind of things that now this may not only be used for audio. The, you know, some transceivers have a, a female RCA connector on the back that's used for an external receiver input mm -hmm. or, or different cases. But out of your choices there, if you want to send audio signal, this is the one you're going to grab is the RCA phono connector. And next question here, what is the general description of a DIN type connector? A, a special connector for microwave interfacing. B, a DC power connector rated for currents between 30 and 50 amperes. C, a family of multiple circuit connections suitable for audio and control signals. Or D, a special watertight connector for use in marine applications. Well, it's not D. It's not. It's not a watertight connector at all. No. Um, the the a, a DIN connector is the same uh, as the old school uh, PS. What, what do they call them? Uh, mic con or uh, keyboard and mouse connectors. What were they called? PS2 DIN connectors. connectors. I think no. They call them. Well, that would be a mini den, I think. Yeah, but it's still a den. Yeah. But it's still that same style. Um, anyway. Um, so you're saying it's this style right here? Yes, that's exactly what I'm saying. With pins on the inside? Yep. Okay, it's, and it's not a connector for microwave interfacing or DC power connector. And it's not a good DC power connector either, really. Um, it's the family of multiple circuit connectors suitable for audio and control signals. I'll agree with you. So yeah. you just, normally they're hooked up like on the back of your rig and you would hook it up to your TNC some, or different things you're going to interface to your radio. There is some voltage on there and a ground and then several control signals. Yep. Receive audio, transmit audio, push to talk. Yeah, it, you know, you, you can run multiple types of um, of signals through one of those, and they generally do, yeah, it's particularly in amateur radio. So it is C, and everybody's uh, guessing that or, or actually exclaiming that in the chat room. And there's a DIN connector right there. This one is a, is a four-pin model, uh, but they can have different numbers of pins in here. It's kind of common... You might see some six, seven, five pin ones, some 13 pin ones 13. used on transceivers. This is a four pin one. I have no idea oh. where I got so. that from, but in my drawer of parts up there that says DIN on it, I've got about three or four of these. Oh, no idea why. Interesting. Yep. 
You remember the little, what they called PS2, the ones that were on the keyboard and the mouse? PS2. PS2 connector, yeah. yeah they call it PS2 connector. But it is, still, I think it's, it's a mini a den. den. But yeah, it's, it's a is. mini. Mm -hmm. Mini den, I believe, is the term for it. Okay, how about this one? Why is it important to know the duty cycle of the mode you're using when transmitting? A, to aid in tuning your transmitter. B, some modes have high duty cycles, which could exceed the transmitter's average power rating. C, to allow time for other stations to break in during a transmission. Or D, all of these choices are correct. Why is it important to know the duty cycle of the mode you are using when transmitting? A, to aid in tuning your transmitter. No, I don't think. That would be any help there. Uh, so we can rule out D as well. It's not all of these choices are correct. C, to allow time for other stations to break in during a transmission. No, knowing your duty cycle would not allow somebody else to break in your transmission. Nope. Yeah, so it's really B. Uh, some modes have high duty cycles which could exceed the transmitter's average power rating. And that is, that is very correct. You know, if you're using a mode like um, signal sideband, you know, you've really only got a signal going out with modulation. Mm -hmm. And uh, the higher the modulation, the more signal goes out there. Uh, in between words, no signal. But if you transmit it in a mode like AM, which has a continuous duty cycle, it's always sent in a carrier regardless of your modulation. So it's, uh, it's going to heat up your transmitter a lot more, or your amplifier, or your power supply. Uh, digital modes, you know, you can run into the same thing with. So it, it is good to know the duty cycle and know how hard you're pushing your gear mm -hmm. when you're using it. So... B. And everybody got that one in the chat room tonight. Apparently these must, questions are a lot easier than I thought they were. Yeah, it must be easy night because I think most everybody's got everything right on here. To, I don't recall seeing any of that weren't. No, I don't either. Well, let's try them with this one. All right. Which communication system sometimes uses the Internet to transfer messages? Is it A, Winlink? B, Ready? C, Ares? Or D, Skywarn? Well, the answer, I'm going to go right on straight for the throat here, and the answer is going to be <laughs> A, <laughs> A yeah. Winlink. Um, although I do know, at least I'm pretty sure I do, that Skywarn... <laughs> uses the internet to pass their weather messages back and forth to the west uh, weather station some now or to the weather center um, but I don't think that's the intention here so the answer's got to be a wind link so yeah. that's kind of like an echo linkage type thing although I've never actually used it is um, it voice wind link I believe so I, I, but I'm not actually sure I, I've never used it. I don't think it is. Um, probably someone over in the chat room there can explain. I'm sure they will. I have never used it either. I think it's for passing data type of traffic. But uh, uh, Tom says close enough. Yeah, messages are as in more text based, such as emails, etc. Yeah, well, everybody's saying A. We did have one B in there. But um, yeah, I'll agree. It's A. I think. I really ought to play around with that Winlink stuff some. That's something uh something you I can toy with. I haven't I've just never really used it. Yeah. Have you? No, I have not. I have not. Many years as I've been in this hobby, there's still a lot of things to uh to explore and do. That's what's kinda cool about it. Which of the following is a way to establish contact with the digital messaging system gateway station? A. Send an email to the system control operator. B. Send QRL in Morse code. C. Respond when the station broadcasts its SSID. Or D. 
transmit a connect message on the station's published frequency. Hmm. Which of the following is a way to establish contact with a digital messaging system gateway station? Send an email to the station control operator. No, I don't think that's it. Because that, uh, you know, <laughs> that's that not going to really use a radio. Anything. Yeah. Send QRL in Morse code. No, I don't think a digital messaging system is going to be listening for Morse code. Respond when the station broadcasts its SSID. Just like Wi-Fi. Like Wi-Fi. Respond with what? Um, no, I don't think that's it. D, transmit a connect message on the station's published frequency. That kind of makes sense, I think. You tell it you want to connect. Um, everybody over in the chat room is saying D, so... Let's see. Transmit a connect message on the station's public uh, published frequency. So we got that one. I tell you what, Tommy. Why don't we take a break here for just a moment? Come okay. right back, and uh, we've got some more of these to go yet. All right, it's just starting to get fun. Yeah. <laughs> Spring is in the air. Check out ICOM's line of D-Star radios. ICOM offers a variety of high-performance and innovative products, and you can stay connected around the world with ICOM's D-Star radios. ICOM's newest D-Star handheld is ready for the season ahead. Lightweight, compact, and tough, the new ID31A Plus is a great choice for any shack or those in harsh environments. 70 centimeters, analog and digital, terminal mode access point mode, and its IPX waterproof rating. The ICOM ID51A Plus 2 provides extended D-Star coverage, allowing you to listen to whatever you want. Terminal and access mode, send and receive text messages and pictures, DV fast data mode, and easy FM repeater setting. The compact and user-friendly ID4100A is a D-Star mobile with big rig features. Its intuitive interface variety of operating modes, and Bluetooth capability make this the preferred D-Star option for those on the go. Integrated GPS receiver, new dot matrix display for enhanced DR mode and GPS information, terminal mode and access point mode, applications for iOS and Android devices, and there's a micro SD card slot for voice and data storage. ICOM's ID5100A has taken innovation and mobility to the next level. With its touchscreen and internal GPS, this radio is a must-have while assessing a situation. 5.5-inch display responds naturally to the touch. DVDV Dual Watch receives both FM-FM and FM-DV modes simultaneously. VS-3 Bluetooth headset provides hands-free communications. And you can show your position, course, and speed with the integrated GPS receiver. Learn more about D-Star today. Visit icomamerica.com slash amateur. And thanks, ICOM, for sponsoring Ham College. And thanks, ICOM, for this shirt, or I'd be sitting here probably without one on tonight. Yep. And thanks, VE3MIC, for this shirt. Yeah. Or... Or I'd probably be wearing a different one. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, your shirt there, I've got one right here, Tommy. You sure do. Uh, you know, all this time I said I didn't have one. I, I got a replacement, so I'm good to go now. And you know, I looked in my closet for mine the other day and could not find it. So don't, I think. Don't look at the back of this yeah, one. Yeah, I think somehow you ended up with mine. But I've also got an icon ball cap here. Nice. Nice as well. And I'm thinking we should give these away. I think we should. And uh, I just so happen to have a winner right here. You do? I well, do. how did they win? Well, he actually won. It's really easy. Anybody can enter. All you've got to do is send an email to hamcollege at amateurlogic.tv. Just give us your name. That's all you got to have is a mm -hmm. name. And an email address. And a random number. And and you well, you get one of those assigned to you. There you go. Don't even have to so you don't even make have it to simpler. pick one. Yeah. So yeah. So do that and get your name in the drawing. 
And uh, we've been asked a couple times if if you have to enter every month, and you do have to enter every month because we clear out that list yeah. after each drawing and keep only the winner. Yeah, and to be kosher with the folks in, in Europe, we don't collect any of this information. Yeah. So it, all those emails you've been getting about how we use the data, we, we don't. We don't. This is uh, this is it. Yep. We use it to send it to ICOM, and then it's gone. Yep. So and we don't keep any of it. So mm -mm. anyway, uh, send it in and uh, and get your name on the list for next month for the drawing. And let's see who won this time, shall we? Yeah. It uh, looks like we're, the winner is Mo KJ Two JDM. Congratulations, Mo. Yeah, congratulations, Mo. What's his What's his full name there, Tommy? <laughs> I figured you were going to do that. His his full name is uh, Joseph. Uh, apparently, you must pronounce it Mo. Yeah. It must be French. It ends with an X. Yeah. In, or it could be. A U X. I probably could butcher it up. Could be Louisiana. Same thing. Yeah. They they end a lot of words with A U X. So yeah, could be. So. Anyway, congratulations. Right. You'll be hearing from ICOM yep. pretty, pretty quick about that. Matter of fact, I sent uh, a message to a uh, guy at ICOM earlier today and said, Hey, why don't you send one of these price packages to Mo? He deserves it. He does deserve it. All right. Thanks for watching, Mo, and everyone else out there. And Ham College at AmateurLogic.tv, you could be next month's lucky winner. How can a Pactor modem or a controller be used to determine if the channel is in use by other Pactor stations? A. Unplug the data connector temporarily and see if the channel busy indicator is turned off. Go ahead and get that buzzer ready while I'm reading this one. Okay. B. Put the modem or controller in a mode which allows monitoring communications without a connection. B, transmit UI packets several times and wait to see if there is a response from another Pactor station. Or D, send the message, is this frequency in use? They're split in the chat room, Tommy. Are they? Yep. Well, that's well okay. Mixed uh, so there. am I. Yep. I'm pretty well mixed, too. I do, I've never used that. How can a Pactor modem or controller be used to determine if the channel is in use by other Pactor stations? So, my first hunch is, what do you do when you when you key the mic and check if it's in use? You ask, right? Is this frequency in use? Mm -hmm. So that's that's first of all, that's my first hunch. So let's go on through with the rest of them. Since that's one that caught my eye first, I'll just work backwards. C, transmit UI packet several times. See if there's a response from another pack to our station. I don't, that does, I don't think that's right. Put the modem or controller in a mode which allows monitoring communications without a connection. So I guess that would be essentially like pushing the squelch button on your hmm. hand. I don't. Unplug the data connector temporarily to see if the channel busy indicator is turned off. So that A is not going to be right, and I don't think C is going to be right. So that brings me down to D or B. B, put the modem controller in a mode which allows monitoring communications without a connection. If we find you more about Pactor, How can the Pactor modem or controller be used to determine if it's in use? The mode or controller be used. Oh, oh this is tough. <laughs> it is. Like I say, they're mixed in the chat room over there. I want to say it's D, but that just seems too easy. I 
I'm on, I'm going to stick with D. I guess I don't I don't know the answer to it. Uh, I'm I'm going to guess at D. That's probably not right. Uh, I I've, just have a funny feeling this. I think you're probably right. It's not right. Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> um, did you know the answer? I did know the answer, well, but the, only the, because the, I had kind of studied over this when I was. Oh. Because I because. I'm about to explain something about Pactor here in a minute, and I had to at least have some okay. background to be able to do that. Uh, but yeah, it's a B, put the modem or controller in a mode which allows monitoring communications without a connection. Uh, boy, every, don't feel bad, you know, we had uh, practically every one of the options guessed there in the chat room. How do you join a contact between two stations using a PACTOR protocol or using the PACTOR protocol? A. Send broadcast packets containing your call sign while in monitor mode. All right. I'm going to say that's not the answer because you can't send anything when you're monitoring. You're, you're listening. You're not transmitting. Uh, so it's not A. B. Transmit a steady carrier until the Pactor protocol times out and disconnects. You're going to make a lot of friends if you do that. You'll be a real popular guy. <laughs> uh, They'll all know your call sign. No, I don't think it's a key down contest. You know, uh, that is not the right answer there. Mm -hmm. uh, look down there at D. Send a NAC response continuously so that the sending station has to pause. No, that doesn't sound like a good neighbor either, does nope. it? Nope. Or C, joining an existing contact is not possible. Pactor connections are limited to two stations. I'm, I'm, that's one I think I'm going to guess. Well, I see the chat rooms picked that one a lot, that's, too. That's what everyone over there said, so uh, I, that's what I'm going to say. It is C. Joining an existing contact is not possible. Pactor connections are limited to two stations. Yeah. Okay, maybe we should talk a moment about uh, how that works. That would be good, because I'm going to go look it up after we leave here. You can it's still do that. Yeah, and I, and I probably will, but it's it's been so long since I took my test with that stuff on it. Mm -hmm. I don't even remember that being on there, although I'm sure it was. Uh, yeah, it's been so long. I don't remember either. But uh, let's let's talk about a thing. Oh, I don't know. Maybe we'd call it handshaking. Mm -hmm. Or I, I'm not sure if that's the right term to use here. But yeah, I'm gonna, I'm, I'll use the term handshaking. You know, there's, there's different kinds of methods of transferring data. Like, um, well, let's take, for instance, uh, PSK31, a mode that's real popular on digital right now, on HF. If I make a PSK31 transmission, Everybody that's out there listening is going to receive it the same. You know, everybody who's monitoring will receive my, my transmission. They might miss a word here or there, you know, if the signal fades out or something like mm -hmm. that. You know, because it's, uh, if you think about, uh, well, communications over the Internet, think of it like the UDP protocol. You're just sending data out, mm -hmm. and whoever captures it, you know, captures it. Whatever they get, they can decode. All right. Um, now, Pactor, uh, using sort of a handshaking protocol there, is like making a connection. It would be like, uh, like an HTTP connection, mm -hmm. you know, on, uh, on a network. In other words, I have to tell you, hey, Tommy, I'm going to talk to you. And I'm gonna not. I'm gonna ignore everything else out there. And if I ask you a question, and I don't hear your complete answer, I'm gonna keep asking you, and you keep telling me until we finally get it all passed across. 
So we've made a connection to where, um, you know, uh, well, like a telephone. I grab a telephone. I dial Tommy's number. I'm talking t to Tommy, mm -hmm. you know. And if I don't if I don't hear everything he said, I ask him again, and he repeats it. That's one way of doing it. If I'm at a football field and I pick up a microphone and talk on the PA system, I'm only going to say it once. You either heard me or you didn't. But everybody, you know, I, I broadcast it out to everybody. So PACTOR is a protocol that uses a, a type of handshaking that you got to acknowledge that, uh, you know, I'll send you a token to request, and you say okay, uh, or or request to connect. You say okay, we'll we'll connect, and then I'll uh, say, uh, I'll tell you something, and I'll send you say maybe a check sum, and then you will will read what I just said, and you'll send me a, a check sum back, and if the numbers match up, well then I know that you got my message. Yeah. And and vice versa. So um, you're getting more or less. Um, you're making sure that 100 percent of the message yeah. gets same, back same, and forth. Same same uh, basic mechanism mm -hmm. as doing a file transfer. Yeah, and uh, packet radio mm -hmm. works like that. You're not just throwing the packets out there and hoping they get to where they're going. You're waiting for the other station to answer and acknowledge. And confirm what you sent. Right. And if they don't, you'll send it again. Well, that's not real handy for doing things like rag chewing, mm -hmm. you know, or just just holding a conversation, uh, because it's okay if maybe you know there's a little fade or you m lose a syllable or, you know, something every now and then or there's a static crash. Really doesn't matter. You know, you got the gist of, of what they were saying. Well, if everything had to get through exactly perfect every time, it would just take a whole lot longer right. to get that through. So that's that's my explanation. I'm sticking to it. That makes good sense. Yeah. That's all the digital fun we're going to have for tonight. We're going to come back and talk some more about HF antennas, though, because there's a lot more we can talk about there. All right. Don't forget to visit our refreshment center during the intermission or any time. You love the tasty array of snacks we have to offer. So will the youngsters. Everything is quality and mm -hmm, so good. Are you new to the ham world or an existing amateur operator who wants to take your license to the next level? Study for your radio license exam at hamstudy.org. Hamstudy.org is a free online learning tool powered by ICOM. It was created by Richard Bateman, KD7BBC, Michael Stuffelbean, KV9G, and Rich Porter, KK6GKE, and it uses a modern web design to enhance the experience of studying for your technician, general, and amateur extra exams. Since 2013, hamstudy.org has helped new and existing hams to familiarize themselves with the question pools, use stats-based flashcards to focus on material they need to learn, and take practice exams to gauge progress. Visit hamstudy.org on your desktop computer or mobile device. Register for a free account at hamstudy.org to access personalized study history and other site features. Prepare for an exam in an intuitive and comprehensive manner. Check out hamstudy.org powered by ICOM for free learning tools. Good luck on your next exam. Last year, we asked our competition to pick the best personal computer based on price and memory. They all chose the Commodore 64. With all the changes in the computer industry, we thought we'd better check again. The new IBM personal computer chose the Commodore 64. The new Apple IIe chose the Commodore 64. The more things change, the more things stay the same. Trade in your home computer or video game now and save $100 on a Commodore 64. A blast of air is powerful fun. And now the most powerful force in the world, wind power, is inside Whammo's air blaster. Unbelievable, but true. You blast out the air and the target breaks up. Swag in the wind with the air compression lever and blow out candles across the room. It's invisible, this magic power to surprise, to tease. Yes, the Air Blaster's fun for all the family. It makes you laugh and love it. 
you have the power of the wind in your own hands. The amazing power to hit any target up to 40 feet away, safely, accurately, with free ammunition, invisible air. Whammo's Air Blaster was invented to delight your friends in a thousand ways. And with your Air Blaster, you get this gorilla target and four weird monster targets. Own an Air Blaster and you own the power of the wind. Get your hurricane gun, the mighty, the astonishing Air Blaster. Sold everywhere for the fun of it by Whammo. Dick Smith Electronics viewers like you, Tim. What a clever dick. Would you rather pay Telecom $40 rent for an extension phone you'll never own or just $19.95 for a Dick Smith color phone? Would you rather miss important calls in the garden or pay $15.95 for this telephone extension bill? Buy a phone and an answering machine or pay $269 for both in one handy unit at Dick Smith. What a clever dick. So, what is the radiation pattern of a dipole antenna in free space in the plane of the conductor? Is it A? It's a figure eight at right angles to the antenna. B, it's a figure eight off both ends of the antenna. C, it's a circle, equal radiation in all directions. Or D, it has a pair of lobes on one side of the antenna and a single lobe on the other side. Radiation and radiation pattern of a dipole antenna in free space in the plane of the antenna. Of the conductor. Of the, um, yeah, of the conductor. I think it's going to be A, figure eight at the right angles to the antenna. According to the chat room, it's either A, B, or C. Yeah. Mm hmm. It's a good. Or D. There's a D in there. Yeah. So t you, 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 you I'm going to go with A. You're going to go with A. Okay. Figure eight. At the, yeah. All right. I'm going to agree with you. I think that's right. Let's see if we're right. And we are. That's lucky. That is a lucky break, isn't it? Too bad we don't have the lottery here. You'll buy a ticket tonight <laughs> on the way home. Well, let's look a little closer at that one and see if we can uh, do some splaining here. Our antenna is sitting here. This will be a half-wave dipole. Which way does the radiation go? Is it is it off the ends here, or is it off either side at a 90-degree angle? No, I think it's going to be at a 90-degree angle. So you're saying it's a figure eight, sort of like that. Oh, no, it's exactly like that. Exactly it's, like that. Yeah, it's even got the little... <laughs> It's got the defect right here in the yeah. middle. Yeah, that's it. So that's the way it is. The, the radiation comes off the sides of the wire there, not off the ends. How does antenna height affect the horizontal azimuthal, azimuthal? radiation pattern of a horizontal dipole HF antenna? A, if the antenna is too high, the pattern becomes unpredictable. B, antenna height has no effect on the pattern. C. If the antenna is less than a half wavelength high, the azimuthal, azimuthal pattern, why don't I get the ones that have azimuthal in them, pattern is almost omnidirectional. Or D. If the antenna is less than a half wavelength high, radiation off the ends of the wire is eliminated. Oh, I think I might even know the answer to this one. Maybe. Right. I'm going to have to go over these again. How does antenna height affect the horizontal azimuthal radiation pattern of a horizontal dipole antenna? A, if the antenna is too high, the pattern becomes unpredictable. No, I think the pattern is going to remain predictable, so that's not the answer. B, antenna height has no effect on the pattern. We know that's not true either, the height no, of the antenna. We've talked about that for the last yep. couple of months. Definitely has an effect on the pattern. C, if the antenna is less than one half wavelength high, 
The azimuthal pattern is almost omnidirectional. Hmm. Or D, if the antenna is less than a half wavelength high, radiation off the ends of the wire is eliminated. I don't think that's it. I think it's C. But I reserve the right to be wrong. Well, that's always a good... Or the wrong to be right. <laughs> if the antenna is less than a half wavelength high, the azimuthal pattern is almost omnidirectional. Next one here. What is near vertical incident sky wave NVIS propagation? Is it A, propagation near the MUF, MUF? <laughs> B, short distance MF or HF propagation using high elevation angles? D, long path HF propagation at sunrise and sunset. Or D, Double hot propagation near the LUF. Propagation near maximum usable frequency. No. Short distance or eight air mean frequency or high frequency propagation using high elevation angles. It's going to be it's going to be a B. Short distance using high elevation angles. Because near vertical incident sky wave propagation, or NVIS, is basically where your signal goes up and comes back down in a fairly short distance. Okay. So you're saying it's... I'm going to say it's B. It's B. Now we've got a good many Bs over there in the chat room. Most of them are Bs. Let's see. And, and that would have been my answer, too. Short distance... MF and HF propagation using high elevation angles. Uh, we'll, we'll talk more about elevation angles in uh, just a moment. Get some more art? If you can call it that. <laughs> <laughs> I think we need to have art class. <laughs> okay, you can ask me this one. Okay. I was just checking the chat room. See what kind of hijinks are going on. What does the term NVIS mean as related to antennas? A. Nearly vertical inductance system. B. Non varying indicated SWR. C. Non varying impedance smoothing. Or D. Near vertical incident sky wave. Well, that's a little unfair. <laughs> why would you say that because the answer was in the previous question oh my <laughs> well I, I, I know think this is rigged yeah it, NVIS means near vertical incident sky wave <laughs> it's D there uh, what else can I say that's the answer for it when we talk about NVIS is related to an antenna we're talking about shooting that signal <clears> straight <throat> up and bouncing it straight back down Near They're vertical, nearly, nearly near vertical incident. So, uh, let's see. Yep, nice near job. vertical incident. You, nailed that one. you know, I thought <laughs> it was really tough there. I didn't know if I was gonna make it. <laughs> okay, well, I'll ask you this one then. <laughs> so I hope it's one that just had the answer. Which of the following? is an advantage of an NVIS antenna. A, low vertical angle radiation for working stations out to ranges of several thousand kilometers. B, high vertical angle radiation for working stations within a radius of a few hundred kilometers. B, high forward gain. D, all of these choices are correct. Okay, D is not correct. That makes an uh, high forward gain is not correct. So high vertical, low, okay, low angle radiation for working station. That's not it. We just said it was high angle. The answer is B, high vertical angle radiation for working stations within a radius of a few hundred kilometers. The other one says A, uh, low vertical. So you know that's not it. We just said. Yeah, so we're seeing everybody it's over B. in the chat room say it's B. I'll agree with that as well. 
High vertical angle radiation for working stations within a radius of a few hundred kilometers. So or kilometers. Right. It mine did yeah. have the answer in the previous yeah. question. Yep. Okay, we got one question left to go. Really? And just to show you how nice a guy I am, you can ask me this one. All right. At what height above ground is an NVIS antenna typically installed? A, as close to one half wavelength as possible. B, as close to one wavelength as possible. C, you, height is not critical as long as it is as it is significantly more than half wavelength. Yeah. D, between one tenth and one quarter wavelength. Okay, what height above ground is an NVIS antenna typically installed? A is close to a half wavelength as possible. Nope. B is close to one wavelength as possible. Nope. C height is not critical as long as it is significantly more than one half wavelength. Nope. D between one tenth and one quarter wavelength. And that's your answer right there. It's D. Looks like everybody, uh, well, most everybody got that over in the chat room there. Let's see, do you agree with me? Mm hmm Yep. It's D. Between one-tenth and one-quarter wavelength. Now, I think we've got a little explaining to do on that one, which... Uh, All right, it's art time. Which kind of works out. Show and tell. Yep. So let me try to go back over here, and uh, we'll get that pointy stick out again. When we get to, when we push these leaves and stuff out of the way, if you would, yeah. <laughs> First, let's look down here. We got the ground down here around the bottom, and it's it's a little rocky there. It's not not real stable. All right, if we put our antenna up here, that's that's like the high the highways in Dallas. Let's say if it's uh we're down at one tenth of a wavelength high. It's a high angle of radiation. The RF is going to go straight up and it's going to bounce straight back down. So people close in are going to be able to hear you because you're, you're bouncing your signal right back in the area where you're at. Now let's say that we raise that antenna up some. Let's, uh, let's raise it on up to say a uh, quarter wavelength. The antenna is right here. Okay. All right, the pattern we're going to get off of that is still, um, it, it's kind of go, going to be semi-high. It's, it's going to be more or less sort of like a circle right there. And uh, there will be some radiation off toward the sides there. So uh, being lower angle, our signal is going to travel out farther and then bounce back down. So we'll get a little further communications with that. That's, uh, you know, around a quarter wavelength there. I'm going to erase all that, and we'll just say this is a half wavelength high right here. We're going to kind of get two lobes coming off of that. Uh, one is going to kind of come like in this direction. The other one is going to kind of go like in that direction. So here, we're not, uh, we're not really bouncing anything straight up or down. Uh, so people in close... Uh, are not really going to get much of a signal off of us. But since our lobes are out there going to the side, that means our signal is going to go out farther, and then it's going to bounce back to Earth out farther. Mm -hmm. So that means um, we're talking farther. We're, we're not really trying to talk to people close in. By putting that antenna at least a half wavelength, uh, boy, that is ugly, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> It is. <laughs> yeah, it's the best I can do, man. I'm not an artist. And I think the no, stick in the not. dirt. <laughs> you're right. Yeah. So anyway, that's kind of what the pattern looks like. All right, now let's say if this was, um, if we put this antenna a full wavelength above the ground there. Who can do that? Yeah. I don't, is that how we... I can't even draw the symbol for wavelength, man. I think I need to quit. 
All right, let's say this is my antenna, <laughs> except it's straight. All right, on a full wavelength, we're going to have sort of like four lobes coming off of that antenna. So now our signal, we've got some of it that's going to go out even further and bounce back down. So now we're really getting much longer path signal off of that. Yeah. So the height definitely makes a difference on where your radiation's going. You know what this does? This makes you want to go home and raise up my antenna some more if I had a way to do it. Yeah. That's pretty interesting stuff. Yeah, so the height of your antenna has a big difference over your angle of radiation. <laughs> Somebody said NBC Peacock. You know, I told you that earlier. Uh -huh. I thought that looked like the NBC Peacock. You must yeah. have been right. That's not at all what I intended for it to look like either. But that's a good antenna, antenna design. High angle of radiation goes straight up, bounces straight back down. Low angle of radiation goes out farther, bounces down farther. So you're going to talk farther. Height is everything. NVIS antenna, you're going to mount that one close to the ground so that all of it goes up and comes straight back down. Which is mostly my situation. Yeah, it's kind of somewhat mine too. Raise it up. You're going to go out farther, but you're not going to be quite as good to the folks close to you. So if you're tired of hearing those DX stations and people far off, lay your antenna on the ground or, <laughs> or just above it and uh, take care of that. Also, we're not, we're not, well, I shouldn't even muddy the waters. We'll probably be covering a uh, vertical in mm -hmm. the future but yeah we will yeah there's some 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 different takeoff angles for it as well so tommy i think we have uh we've pretty much got a whole show here only one buzzer only one that is true and that was for me yep and might i say we're mighty proud that you got that buzzer instead of me yeah yeah I was rooting for you, though. I know you were, man. I, th I appreciate, you know, your support. <laughs> <laughs> well, sp speaking of shirts. Yeah. What if you needed some nice wardrobe? Well, we know how to get the Ham Crew shirt there. Well, you can get some uh, Amateur Logic and Ham College. This is Ham College, after all. Mm-hmm. Uh, shirts and, and hats and so forth from amateurlogic.spreadshirt.com. You can go get all the cool swag there and uh, be looking sharp at your next ham fest. You sure will. And we, by the way, we did see quite a few people wearing s shirts we and did. stuff at, and hats at uh, Dayton Hamvention this uh, past week when we were there. We sure did. As a matter of fact, we took some photos with a few of them. And yeah, so we'll, we'll show a few of those on the next mm -hmm. Amateur Logic. Um, if you want a Hawkins Middle School AV Club shirt, then you need to send your request to VE3MIC. <laughs> no, Mike, sorry to set where you up there. Got those from? I don't. He probably found them on the internet. Yeah, but they're, they're pretty cool though. Yeah. Uh, another thing I want to mention about um, Hamvention before we go, I was really surprised this year at how many folks commented about ham college yeah 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 me too a lot of people said how much they really enjoyed it yeah even even long time hams like ourselves yeah uh like to get on here and watch and and have a refresher and stuff try to answer the questions mm -hmm. see how much you remember but uh yeah it was a really great response a yeah, lot of great comments. yeah kind of surprising we hoped that we would make a lot of new hams with this show and we have been making a lot but we've been making a lot of old hams with it, too. Yeah. Apparently. Yeah, absolutely. It's, uh, uh, it's pretty fun. Actually, it's good to uh, to go over these questions again and review all the things you forgot. Yeah, I enjoy it, honestly. Yeah. And I enjoy, you know, we, we have these questions, but I don't really go study them. Uh, a few times, like we said, we'll have to look them up when we're doing a topic. Mm -hmm. But it's kind of fun to try to see how much you remember. We've got field day coming up next month. Yeah. 
that's going to be a fun event. I uh, hope the weather pattern changes. Yeah, for you non-hams watching this, if you don't know what field day is, do a little search on the internet. Uh, field day is a, a really fun activity. And we're looking forward to it. As a matter of fact, I got a new antenna right up there in a box. I'm looking forward to, to us using it field day this year. Yeah, that should be good. Yeah. We're, right now we're in a weather 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 pattern. Weather pattern? Yeah, a yeah. wetter weather pattern. We need the drizzle guard. Yeah. yeah. It's been raining pretty much every day. It's already had two thunderstorms today. Yeah. So mm -hmm. hopefully that's going to be passed by then. And the night's still young. And the night's still <laughs> Yeah, no <laughs> kidding. It could be another one. Yep. Thanks for being here, everyone. Uh, great to have you along. And, uh, you know, at Ham College, we don't give any homework, but you'd probably be better off if you did some anyway. Oh, you would. You yep. would. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, always go refer your study guide yourself mm -hmm. and study some more as well. Yep. 73, everybody. We'll see you next time. 73. Ralph is the most observant person in the chat room, I think. Yeah. Why Which, do you think I said that? Because he saw the sign change. <laughs> Look, we're going to show you how we do that. That is not a digital effect there. That's a real sign. Tell them a few things that you saw this year stall. Stall? That's what oh, I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. Okay.